Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, unfortunately, this is the third lecture of a same topic. And uh, since all, both the two lectures were of more than one hour uh, duration, so I had to resort to the third lecture. Well, this lecture will not be that long, hopefully. So in this lecture, I'm going to cover uh, mainly the, the complications and management of lymphedema. But before that, I'm going to discuss a uh, few other types of lymphedema, that is uh, the pre-tibial mixed edema and uh, uh, trauma-induced lymphedemas. So let's proceed to the lecture. Uh, pre-tibial mixed edema. Uh, the pre-tibial mixed edema is a form of cutaneous mucinosis that typically occur in association with Graves' disease. Since the synonym of thyroid and hence the synonym of thyroid dermopathy. So, um, pretibial mixed edema is associated with hyperthyroidism and typically Graves' disease. Or uh, the, uh, the other name of pretibial mixed edema is thyroid dermopathy. What happens in the disease is that there is a deposition of hyaluronic acid and other glucose aminoglycans within the dermis and subcutaneous tissue resulting in development of asymptomatic pre-tibial nodules and plaques that have yellow-brown hue and occur on the lower limb. So the typical site is the lower limb or shins and characterized by uh, plaques which are asymptomatic and have a yellow-brown hue. The precise cause of this phenomenon is uncertain. There is a big male uh, difference in male to female ratio that is 4 ratio 1. Pathophysiology. PTM occur as a result of glycose aminoglycans deposition in the dermis and subcutaneous tissue. The thyroid stimulating, um, the thyroid, uh, stimulating hormone receptor antibodies may bind to and stimulate the dermal fibroblasts to increase the production of glucosoaminoglycans glycoaminoglycans resulting in separation of collagen fibers, expansion of connective tissue and edema formation. So it starts with thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies and the obstruction of dermal lymphatics by mucin result in lymphedema. So the lymphedema in pretibial mixed edema is secondary to the deposition of mucin between the collagen bundles and as a result of this mucin, it obstructs the lymphatic drainage and lymphatic flow. Here you can see how the pretibial mixed edema looks like and the histopathological appearance of different mucinosis is almost similar. There is loss of collagen fibers which is associated. Uh, you can see there is a loss of collagen fibers and there is uh, a deposition of a blue bluish material between the collagen bundles and if you go for uh, the mucin stain which is the alcyon blue stain this mucin deposition is highlighted uh, from the papillary up deep into the reticular dermis. Clinical features of pre-tibial maxedema it is uh, almost exclusively seen in Graves disease and patient has a history of thyrotoxicosis which include weight loss, palpitation and hyperhidrosis. And in addition, there is a uh, finding of ophthalmoplegia and acropachy. The pretibial mixed edema developed prior to, during, or after thyrotoxic state, and it is not related to thyroid function. And it usually occur 12 to 24 months after the onset of Graves disease, but may occur up to 12 years after its development. Usually, it occurs within one year. PTM is typically confined to the lower limb and shin are the classical site. Sometimes toes may be the only affected site. It very rarely affects other body sites such as head and neck, torso or upper limb. And if occurs on these sites, it is probably triggered by trauma. But the natural, the natural uh, site is the pretibial. Patient typically present with firm, 
non pitting indurated nodules and plaques on peritibial region and feet lesions may be flesh colored or have a yellowish brown hue a pudy orange appearance may develop as a result of expansion of interfollicular dermis cutaneous lesions may be asymptomatic occasionally pruritic or cause discomfort in severe cases of um, uh, pretibial mix edema the lesions may coalesce to give the entire extremity an enlarge and verruciform appearance functional impairment that is inability to wear shoes as a result of toe disfigurement and or development of secondary lymphedema may occur so generally the pretibial mix edema is asymptomatic and characterized by indurated nodules and plaque that have yellow brown hue it uh, um sometime it has a pudy orange appearance like we see in other mucinosis and uh, pudy orange appearance is because of uh, edema of interfollicular dermis uh, pruritus is usually not described but sometime little discomfort occur and very rarely whole limb is uh, thick and enlarged so this is the typical pre tibial mix edema lesion occur on the shin as well as on the toe differential diagnosis include the other causes of lymphedema stasis dermatitis obesity related related lymphedematous mucinosis and lichen amyloidosis although lichen amyloidosis does not give this appearance disease course and prognosis in mild cases 50% of patient achieve complete remission after several years and 58% of the treated severe cases achieve complete or partial remission and very severe form appears to be persistent investigation diagnosis of pretibial mix edema is possible from the patient's history and characteristic clinical findings it is rarely necessary to perform a skin biopsy especially if history of hypothyroidism or graves ophthalmo ophthalmopathy is there if biopsy is undertaken then the typical histopathological features which i have already explained will be seen investigation of lymphatic flow with lymphocytography is not routinely performed management the mild and asymptomatic cases require no particular treatment if symptomatic treatment options include use of potent topical corticosteroids under occlusion at night for several months the use of compression hosiery or multilayer bandage may be used to manage the associated lymphatic impairment or secondary lymphedema this is seen in more extensive and chronic cases a small number of cases require surgical excision but with caution as ptm may develop within the areas of trauma other options in with limited efficacy include intralesional steroid which is effective if the lesion is small systemic immunomodulators like prednisolone plasmapheresis intravenous immunoglobulin rituximab which are usually given in case of extensive disease and octeroids octeroids then the next topic is trauma induced lymphedema lymphedema and other lymphatic complications such as lymphocele or lymph fistula as already described in the previous talk develop after therapeutic in interventions or accidental damage to the lymphatic drainage pathways surgical interventions include the varicose vein surgery the saphenous vein harvesting for coronary artery bypass graft and resection of excess skin and soft tissue of thigh after massive weight loss radiotherapy to lymph nodes can be much of a risk factor towards lymphedema and genetic factors are likely to be important if obesity is there then the risk multiplies wound infection increases the incidence of post surgical and accidental lymphedema 
then self-inflicted injuries such as repeated application of tunicase will eventually cause a permanent lymphatic damage and chronic swelling, uh, which is one of the secretin syndrome. Intravenous drug abuse may cause lymphedema due to combination of infection and injecting agents causing lymphangitis plus venous damage. Then there is a puffy hand syndrome, which is a long-term complication of intravenous drug abuse and occur in 7 to 16% of IV drug users. Management. The decongestive lymphatic therapy is the first line treatment. Infection need to be treated and prevented. Use of additional therapies like pneumatic, pneumatic compression therapy and Velcro wraps may be considered. The third topic today is lymphangitis. Lymphangitis, as the name signifies, is inflammation of lymphatic vessels. Most commonly caused by bacteria, virus or fungi, or infiltration by cancer cells. It is clinically characterized by tender red streaks in the limb, correspond to the inflamed lymphatic vessels. And lower limb edema is often accompanying feature. Sometimes a more diffuse erythema is seen, extending up to the medial side of the leg and thigh, and its distinction from ascending cellulitis becomes difficult. In some circumstances, painful inflammation of regional lymph glands that is, lymph adenitis may arise. So, lymph angitis may complicate with lymph adenitis. The usual clinical appearance is, form, is in a form of cords of uh, inflammation, red cords of inflammation. Pathophysiology. Lymph angitis occur in filariasis. Sporotrichoid spread, which is also known as the nodular lymphangitis. This is important. It is described by a characteristic pattern of superficial cutaneous lesions that progress along the path of lymphatic drainage. So typically, the sporotrichoid spread is linear and the spread of infection is along the lymphatic cords. That's why the different nodules develop or along a track of lymphatic. This is clinically seen in sporotrichosis, which is one of the deep fungal infection, nocardiosis, chromoblastomycosis, and aspargillosis. Then it is also seen in cutaneous leishmaniasis and atypical mycobacterium, especially mycobacterium marinum. So the distalmost lesion is the primary lesion and is usually the largest lesion while the rest of the lesions on the proximal sides are the sporotrichoid spread of the primary lesion. Snake bite venom will often cause lymphangitis. Pressure bending with immobilization is recommended first aid treatment with intention of preventing the lymph drainage. A Mondor disease is considered to be a form of superficial thrombophilobitis, but it commonly complicates lymph node removal. So a form of lymphangitis or lymphatic thrombosis may be more likely. So although considered a superficial thrombophilobitis, but it is more uh, of a lymphangitis. Then it is also described following a jellyfish sting. Lymph can clot and lymph angio thrombosis may occur more often than realized. Sclerosing lymph angitis of penis is a condition that is related to vigorous sexual activity, manifesting as asymptomatic, firm cord-like swelling around the coronal sulcus of the penis. Carcinoma erysiploides, which is lymph angitis carcinomatosis, carcinomatosa or carcinoma telangiectatica or carcinoma and curacy. This occurs when cancer cells infiltrate the dermal lymphatics. 
It is a form of metastatic spread and occurs most commonly with breast cancer, but occur with melanoma and thyroid, lung, gastric, pancreatic, ovarian, prostate, and colorectal cancers. It manifests clinically as fixed erythematous patch or plaque resembling cellulitis but without fever. The inflamed area show a distinct raised periphery and edema secondary to lymphatic obstruction. A network of or lattice pattern of telangiectatic vessels represents the infiltrated dermal lymphatics. This is the cancer which is spread on to the um, on to the uh, other areas and this is carcinoma erysiploides. Then this is the second last topic of today that is uh, rather third last topic that is complications of lymphedema and major complications of lymphedema are swelling and infection. Swelling. Limb swelling lead to discomfort, limb heaviness, reduced mobility and occasionally impaired functions. Secondary musculoskeletal complications such as back pain and joint problems are seen particularly in cases of asymmetrical lower limb swelling. So as naturally, as you can see naturally that lymphedema cause heaviness of the limb. So this heaviness will reduce discomfort and decrease mobility and impaired functions and will indirectly affect the joints. Then the skin changes that occur with the lymphedema have already described several times in the previous uh, topics. That is elephantiasis, which refer to the skin resembling the elephant skin. And the epidermis is hyperkeratotic and warty, and dermis is markedly thickened and fibrotic. So epidermis is hyperkeratotic and warty, and dermis is thick and indurated and fibrotic. Dist distended dermal lymphatics can bulge on the skin surface, producing a cobblestone appearance. This thickening of skin impairs the joint mobility and leakage of lymph through the skin, which is called as the lymphoria, may occur from engorged dermal lymphatics. So this is called as lymph angiectasia. Lymph angiectasia is engorged dermal lymphatics and lymphoria is the extrusion of lymph from these lymphatics. This is elephantiasis, elephantiasis verrucosa nost uh, nost uh, nost uh, nostrus, elephantiasis verrucosis nostris, nostris, showing marked hyperkeratosis and peplomatosis. Infection. So after the uh, main skin findings of hyperkeratosis and induration and uh, uh, lymph uh, cover stone appearance, lymphoria, lymphangiectasis, infection develop. And the episodes of secondary infection, particular cellulitis, are a characteristic feature of lymphedema. There are recurrent episodes which, and every episode will impair the lymphatic drainage further and further and exacerbate the lymphedema. Commonly, the bacteria are hemolytic streptococci, particularly group A, B, and G. And the toxicity from infection can be extreme and fatal. And lymphedema also promotes tinea pedis, which is difficult to avoid because the web space skin is macerated from the swollen toes. Of course, psychological issues. 9% of patients with lymphedema have their uh, affect their employment status. The relationships also suffer. And there is a difficulty in finding clothes and shoes. Patients with arm swellings in relation to breast cancer experience functional impairment, psychosocial maladjustments, and increased psychological morbidity. Malignancy. There is a syndrome known as the Stewart-Treves syndrome, 
which describes lymph angiosarcoma developing from a well-established post-mastectomy edema. However, lymph angiosarcoma is now described as occurring with lymphedema of any cause. Other tumors that are recorded to develop in lymphedema include a BCC, an SCC, lymphoma melanoma, malignant fibrous histocytoma, Merkel cell tumor, and Kaposi's sarcoma. So this is lymph angiosarcoma developing in primary lymphedema. Then the investigations for lymphedema include lymph lymphography and lymphocentinography. X-ray contrast lymphography or lymph angiography remains the gold standard mode of demonstrating lymphatic collectors and lymph nodes. However, it is rarely used as a technique that requires the invasive procedures of direct cannulation of the lymphatics. Lymph angiosinti lymph lymphocentiography Lymph angiosintiography is an isotope lymph, uh, lymphography and is currently the investigation of choice as it involves the simple intradermal or subcutaneous injection of a radio labeled tracer protein. Lymph angiosintiography has a potential to distinguish between different types of primary lymphedema, but it cannot measure the, the it cannot provide the functional measurement of flow. So you have to differentiate between the lymphography, which is by, um, by a contrast, and lymph angiosentiography, which is by a radio label tracer protein. The fluorescent micro lymph angiography is the fluorescent micro lymph angiography is a research tool that uses the fluorescent contrast agent to provide information on superficial dermal lymphatics. Then another kind of uh, uh, examination is near infrared uh, lymph angiography using idiocyanine green and is recently introduced and potentially useful technique. Then MRI. M MRI lymph angiography is used to demonstrate the presence of enlarged and tortuous lymphatic vessels in patients with unspecified lymphedema. Then lymphedema management. This is the last topic. The lymphatic failure results in accumulation of protein as well as water within the sol solen tissue. And you know, because of the protein in water, the lymphedema swelling is non-pitting. Treatment is difficult because of presence of the solid component in the swelling. In developed countries, the emphasis is more on the physical form of the therapy, involving the massage, exercise, compression designed to stimulate lymph drainage. In poorer, hotter countries where hosiery and appropriate bandages are too costly or too uncomfortable to wear in warm temperatures, surgery stays as the main treatment. Unfortunately, there is no proven curative treatment for lymphedema. And management is aimed at improving the swelling through physical treatments, which are designed to stimulate the flow through existing or collateral drainage routes. Care of skin and prevent, prevention of infection. The regular application of emollients is important for hydrating the skin uh, and making it supple and discourage hyperkeratosis. For deep cracks and crevices, regular toilet is necessary, followed by antiseptic soap, for example, potassium permanganate. So first potassium permanganate soap, then uh, emollient application. Hyperkeratosis often improves by application of a keratolytic agents like salicylic acid, 5%, but the best treatment to re reverse elephantiasis is a long-term compression. Care of skin, good hygiene, control of tinea pedis, 
and good antisepsis following abrasions and minor wounds are important in reducing the chances of developing cellulitis or other infections. Exercise and movements are crucial to lymphatic drainage. The dynamic muscle contractions, which is isotonic exercises, encourage both passive and active phase of lymph drainage. External compression. External compression, hosiery, bandages, pneumatic compression, complements the exercise program. This provides the most powerful stimulus to lymphatic drainage. And compression is much less effective without exercise. So these hosiery bandages and pneumatic compressions is a different field altogether. A very advanced type. So these are the different kind of bandages. Pneumatic, comp pneumatic compression therapy or intermittent sequential pneumatic compression should not be used in preference to exercise and compression but can be useful in mixed lymphovenous edema in weak patients. Then pneumatic, pneumatic compression softens the tissue, reduces the limb volume during treatment, but is doubtful that any long-term benefit is gained over the normal hosiery and exercise alone. Massage, which is the manual lymphatic drainage therapy. Manual lymphatic drainage is a massage treatment performed by lymph edema therapist with the aim of rerouting the accumulation of lymph from swollen region via collateral lymphatics to lymphatic basins that are able to drain normally. The initial step in MLD is to decongest central or proximal area before massaging the edematous region. So first decongest the area where the drainage is likely to develop occur. Weight loss. Many patients with lymphedema are overweight because of the morbid obesity as well as because of fluid retention. Then control of weight in combination with physical treatment are sometimes sufficient to resolve edema completely in some patients. Low level, level laser therapy and uh, kino, um, kine, kineso taping. Low laser Low-level laser therapy reduce limb volume and pain in patients with especially breast cancer-related lymphedema. And this kinos, uh, kineso taping is also shown to increase the lymph flow. The other indication of low laser therapy is to stimulate the hair, hair growth. Pharmacological therapies. There is little use of drugs therapy in management of lymphedema. Diuretics alone demonstrate minimal improvement in lymphedema as their mode of action is to reduce the capillary filtration and by reducing the blood volume. But as you all know, lymphedema is because of decreased lymphatic drainage. Pa uh, para um, parovin, which is an ox, uh, oxyrotin, and cumarin, which is a benzopyrone, have been tried in lymphedema and create small reduction in limb volume by reducing the vascular permeability. Introduction of VE, um, vascular endothelial growth factor C, in animal models of post-surgical lymphedema induced lymphatic vessel growth and subsequent reduction of lymphedema. Then surgical options. Surgery has a specific role in management of lymphedema. It is of value in limb lymph edema in a few patients in whom, even after conservative treatment, the size and weight of limb inhibits its use or interferes with the mobility. Surgery involves removing excessive tissue by bypassing the local lymphatic defect. The lifelong non-surgical measurements like Hosey may be continued post-operatively. Then lymph uh, fatico venous anastomosis surgery. It's a quite an advanced kind of surgery and uh, is a kind of lymphovenous bypass utilizing a super microsurgical technique to anastomose distal subdermal lymphatic vessels with adjacent venues less than 0.8 millimeter in diameter to attempt to improve regional lymph drainage and potentially remove the need of use of hosiery.
liposuction. Chronic lymphedema is associated with fatty tissue deposition in some patients. If this excessive adipose tissue is removed by liposuction, then it would significantly reduce the um, um, volume of the uh, leg and, uh, and especially helpful in therapy-resistant lymphedema of extremities. So this brings to the end of this chapter. And I hope I would be able to see you next time with a lecture on some other topic. Thank you very much for the patient listening of all the three lectures. Um, thank you very much and goodbye and have a good day.